presenter will be presenting about planes and how to fly them. Okay. Okay. So, say thanks. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I just got my private pilot license. Uh, in general, <laughs> yeah. So I, I thought I wanted to share what I learned uh, during my course. Okay. So this is what I'll talk about. I'll first talk about uh, what's inside a light plane like a Cessna 172. I'll talk about how do you plan a flight and then finally how to make one actually. Okay, so uh, first, what is this Cessna 172, right? It's actually the most produced plane in the world. It's the most common plane in the world. It's not an Airbus, it's not a Boeing. It's this plane. If you in case you all don't believe, right, you just go to Wikipedia and just see the list of the most produced aircraft, right? Really, 44,000 plus made and still counting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you can take a look at the specs. It weighs almost one ton. It can go uh, about three times faster than a typical car. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so first, flight controls, right? I just start with the basics, lah. Like, uh, how does a plane like control itself in the air? So you have things like the ailerons. Ailerons is uh, the controls near the edge of the wing, right? So they control the bank. The elevator is at the tail. They control the pitch. The rudder controls the yaw. Okay. There's something new which I think uh, many of you don't know. There's something called the trim. So an elevator trim, right, is something that is sorry, uh, connected here to the is a part of the elevator so it helps to like neutralize the elevator control so let's say if you want to do a climb right i if you keep holding on the control column like that right it's going to be quite tiring so the pilots they use something called a trim so it basically centers the control around the up position so that's what a trim is for then uh, another thing is called the flap so the flap it's not in this picture but it's actually this one over here this control and this control so this one helps to increase the lift and the drag of the aircraft Okay, and this picture, this is the flat. Yeah. A question there. Yeah. Um, also, can you uh, can you also like angle? Um, uh, uh, sorry, can I take questions after after this? Yeah, yeah. My time is quite tight. Okay, so the what powers the aircraft? So it's actually this engine. It's actually quite similar to that of a car engine, you know. Yeah. So it's four cylinders. Then uh, th this one doesn't have a gearbox. So the the crankshaft of the pro of the engine right directly is con is directly connected to the propeller, uh, and one thing that is quite unique is that this is a independent magneto driven spark plug. Okay, a spark plug is something that basically ignites the fuel in the engine right. For a car engine right, the spark plug is actually connected to the electrical system of the car, but for aircraft engine, this is entirely independent, so that in case there's electrical failure in the plane right, the engine can still continue to run. Okay, and the propeller is about almost two meters in yeah, length. Yeah, and the fuel is F gas. So it's uh, very similar to gasoline in the car. Yeah. Then the electrical systems, right? Uh, this one uses a 28 volt system. But this is not standard across aircraft. Some aircraft, for example, the Piper, I think they use 14 volts. Uh, I know for cars, it's standard is 12 volts. But, but for a plane, it differs. Uh. So the battery, 24 volts. Actually, electrical system on the Cessna 172 is quite simple, actually. There's not many much stuff, uh, so you only have to start the clock, the light, and the avionics. Avionics, I'll come to that. Uh. Then you have the switches and the circuit breaker. So the switches is, that, is below the yoke here. And you have circuit breakers also. I mean, in cars, they have circuit breakers, but it's not so uh, open in front of the, in front of the pilot. Uh, right? yeah, so because things, uh, problems happen often. But helpful enough for the circuit breakers to be placed right in front. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, what about the instrument panel, right? So uh, you probably have seen uh, planes like that, but you probably wonder what are they, all, what are they all of them about, right? So I'll talk about them. Okay, so we call this instrument called the six pack. So the six pack, right, is this six here and here. Okay. So the first one is called the airspeed indicator. So you can think of it like a speedometer in a car. La. So it basically says how fast your aircraft is going with respect to the air around it. The next one is called the attitude indicator. So this one indicates the amount of pitch and bang. Right? So if we see this thing here, a bit bang, a bit, that means my aircraft is banged slightly to the left. But it's level with the horizon, so it's not, uh, like not climbing or descending. Then the next one is the altimeter, how high the aircraft is above, the, above sea level. This one is called the turn coordinator. Okay, uh, okay, turn coordinator is to show like whether the aircraft, when you're doing a turn, there's something called a coordinated turn, whether the aircraft is turning nicely or not. Yeah, <laughs> to put it simply. Okay, heading, heading, heading indicator 
just like compass. Vertical speed indicator, how fast the aircraft is climbing or descending. Okay, then now we come to the control yoke. So the control yoke, this is not a stirring wheel. Uh. <laughs> okay, so uh, the control yoke has these functions. Uh. So let's say if you want to make the airplane pitch up, like so it's basically like that. Pull up or push down to pitch down. Then to bang right is to adjust the ailerons, it's just to turn like that. Uh, what is not shown, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's different. Yeah, it's, dif it's different in a way. Okay, so the next one is the pedals. So the pedals cannot be seen in the picture, lah. But so they control a few things: the rudder, the steering, and the brakes. So the rudder is this way. So the the steering, right? Let's say you want to taxi on the ground, you want to make the aircraft turn left or turn right, right? It's press the pedals. It's not turn the yoke. Okay. Okay. Then the brakes. The brakes is like normal. <laughs> So the brakes, yeah, the brakes is also from the pedal. And this one is the ground brakes, uh, it's not the air brakes, yeah. On the ground that time, uh, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, I'll go to, the, this is a bit more in depth, this is the pitot-static system. Okay, so basically it is to say, how do this instrument work? So this is more in depth already. So on the aircraft, uh, there's two main parts. So one is called the pitot tube. So this pitot tube is here. Then there's another one called the static part, yeah. So you can see how the thing works. So the pitot tube is facing the front, right? So the air that is coming in will go inside the tube, right? And this one goes to the SP indicator. The static port is basically uh, basically the air pressure that's surrounding the aircraft. Okay, I'll come to that. Let me go into detail. Okay, so altimeter. The altimeter is only connected to the static port, right? So here, it goes right here. So it's like when you when the aircraft climbs, right, the air gets uh, less dense, right? So this can be detected by the altimeter, by the static port. So, this. so how it works is that static port goes in. So if you get more dense, right, it means more air goes in, right? So this, this thing will compress or expand. Yeah, then the altimeter will, will, will reflect accordingly. Yeah, and a lot, yeah. This is called a steam gauge. Okay, next one is a vertical speed indicator. So this one, right, this one is a bit unique. Right? This one has two holes. So this one, the air can go in here and there's a calibrated leak. So the calibrated leak will allow air in and out at a certain rate. So, we, the, so this instrument actually measures the, sorry. This instrument measures the difference between air inside here and the leak outside. So let's say you climb, right, suddenly, right, then a lot of air will suddenly come out. But the calibrated leak actually takes time to respond. So with this difference, right, this instrument can detect it and show the rate of climb and descent. Yeah, I differentiate. Yes, right. Okay. Then the next one is the airspeed. Okay, questions after that. Uh. Yeah. So the airspeed indicator, right, is uh, it actually has two, it takes uh, air from two sources, the pitot tube and the autostatic, uh, sorry, and the static source. Why they have two sources? Because, okay, you need to, uh, to measure airspeed is basically the air rushing in, right? But this one has both the dynamic and the static component. Where's my mouse? Yeah. So by actually having a static port there, the static port cancels away the static component of this, of the air coming in here. So you get the pure dynamic pressure, which is used to measure the airspeed already. Okay, uh, this one, the other instruments. La. So these are all pure gyroscopic because they just deal with orientation of the aircraft, not the movement of the aircraft. Right? So if the aircraft do this, right, then the gyroscope will keep the instrument stable while the aircraft like does this, 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 this. Yeah. So the now is avionics. So avionics stands for aviation electronics. Uh, on the Cessna, is pretty pretty primitive la. So they use AM radio radios, and the, this view So actually, AM radios is still used even the most at the most state of advanced aircraft today. It's a standard. They don't use FM radio. The reason is because AM radio, right? Let's say if two guys transmitting, right? They will actually overlap. If FM radio, right, one of them will actually overwhelm the other one. So the, the in aviation, they want this to happen. In case two person transmit at the same time, you still can hear both. Then uh, this VHF, right, or uh, omnidirectional range navigation radio, right, is actually to help navigate. So there are many VOR stations in the world. Even in Singapore, I think there are three of them. So they, because aviation is quite uh, traditional, they don't, GPS is still not considered primary. VOR is primary because GPS can fail. And G VOR is more accurate because you're actually closer to the ground than to the satellites in the air. So it's actually more precise, the VOR. 
Oh, of course, they still have GPS, lah. Huh? And GPS has no map, ah. Huh? This one, this one they just tell you that if you want to go somewhere, they tell you the, the direction to turn to. <laughs> okay, transponder. So transponder is a device that will actually reply to the ATC radar what is the code you are in. So for example, this uh, it, this transponder is walking zero two zero one. So when I key there, ATC can identify. Oh, zero two zero one is my aircraft. Uh, autopilot. Uh, they have, but okay, this particular aircraft autopilot is inoperative. <laughs> but uh, because it's a training aircraft, so the the school want us to fly by hand, stick and rather all the way. Yeah, no, no, too simple already autopilot. But autopilot is very simple. It cannot take off and land. It can only maintain a particular heading. And uh, I think speed. I'm not sure speed can kind of, but very simple one. Not not compared to the modern like the Airbus or Boeing aircraft. Okay, so now I come to the planning and making the flight. So let's say if I want to plan the flight, how does a pilot do it, right? So the Let's say if I want to start and end at this, this starts here, I got to go here. So the many considerations go, go to it, like the obvious way maybe I take a straight line, right? But the straight line is not always possible because example, right? There's an airport here. This is actually a mili military airport. So uh, may not always possible to just cut like that. So maybe another way is I need to cross east or cross west. Why I take such a roundabout way is because there are many air spaces here. So all these lines are indicate air spaces at certain altitudes where I cannot easily just go through unless I have special permission, right? So I need to take this kind of way. And if I do this kind of way, right, obviously it may seem east way seems better, right? Shorter, right? But there are mountains here. So you need to consider, you know, because if your aircraft can actually climb above the mountains or not, right? Uh, then things like uh, nearby ports, in case there are emergencies, where can I land? Uh, navigational aids, uh, things like the VWA station that can help me, right? So all this consideration. <coughs> then I make a flight plan. Wow, so many, right? So many numbers, right? Actually, most of the numbers is because of something called the wind correction. Like if I want to go from this place to that place, uh, I cannot take a straight line because if there's a wind blowing right, I will drift off course. So my, I have to actually calculate the angle that I need to turn towards the wind to compensate for the wind drift. Yeah, there's all, all the other like fewer. I need to calculate how how long, how much runway do I need, and so on. Yeah, a lot of considerations. Then after that, weight and balance. Yeah, so I need to actually do this so that to make sure that I don't overload the plane. So things like uh like all the, for example all these passengers right, they, I need to fill up this form to fill in the moment. The moment is like the distance to the fulcrum. Uh. Then I get the weight of everything. Then after that, calculate the center of gravity. Make sure that center of gravity is within the safety li limits. So it means that, see, when, let's say I take a passengers next time, uh, I need to ask the way of everybody. Uh, <laughs> so a sensitive question, uh, I know, uh, but then uh, have to ask, uh, if not, uh, got my have problems. Uh, yeah. So personal equipment, uh, quite a lot, so I pass around. So uh, pilots write this something called a knee board, uh, so it's like tied to your knee. So you can refer, look at information quickly, I just pass around. Yeah. <laughs> then a slide rule. This is a circular slide rule. So, yeah. So I use that, you know, because uh, they have calculators. But in case calculators can fail, so during the test, right, the instructor wants us to use the old-fashioned way, and the plotter also like to find my heading and all this. Pass around. Then I have an aviation calculator here. Yeah. Yeah. Special. Yeah. Okay. Pass around. Calculators. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then oh yeah, my headset. In case you want to see, it's a different type. Yeah. This is actually headset I use. Okay, then after that, what I do? Uh, I need to actually prepare paperwork. No, f check, verify paperwork. Make sure the airplane is, is uh, all the maintenance is done properly. Then I need to make sure all the paperwork is on board. If not, I cannot fly. If I fly a plane that is not airworthy, uh, it's actually uh, an offense. Then do a check. So many checks, right? Make sure the lights are working. Make sure instruments are working. Make sure the fuel is top up. People go fly a plane with empty fuel tank and then they die. <laughs> yeah, all this law. Okay. Oh, sorry, the card I didn't bring. The card is in my bag. Yes, the card is in my bag. Yeah, so this one right, is actually to sample the fuel. Okay, so what I did just did is I asked for takeoff clearance. Ah. Yeah, he's already very busy. Ah. <laughs> That's, that's uncommon. Uh, two four four one echo, Montgomery chair, runway chair, right, come take off. Wait, right, clear for take off. Two four four one echo. Okay. So I just fast forward. No, no, I see. Let me, I take three. off. Three. This is I'm talking to myself. Which airport was it? This is at uh, Montgomery Field in San Diego. And where did you fly to? 
Uh, no, this one is just a local, so that means I go to a certain area and come back. Which one did you go? Sorry? Which airport did you go? Uh, no, same airport, so Montgomery. Airport, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so I just take off, quite simple. Then I uh, just go. How many looping? No, no loop, this one is not, yeah. <laughs> The, the radio you need to like push to talk. Yes, push to talk. Okay, so I, I need to make regular position reports lah. Like to tell other aircraft in the area that okay, Continue this coast, yeah, where Cessna, I am. Cessna, south of Mount Solidate, 1,500 feet, heading north, San Diego coast. They trust you enough to let you fly though. Yeah, you have to, it's part of the requirement to, to the pilots. Okay. Pass. So let me fast forward, blah, 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 blah. You see, I make, you can see the map at the top, the top right la. I make one loop la. They go there, then after they come back. Uh, I use GPS on my phone, then I sing later. Okay, so before I land at the airport, right, I need to actually make a, I need to listen to the weather report la. Okay. Let me fast forward lah, uh, because of time constraint. <laughs> no, I uh, have got iOS, but I didn't use. Wait, uh, sorry. Okay, so now uh, then I'll request for the clearance to land. Uh. Make left traffic and we trade left. Left traffic, do it left. Very fast, right? Okay. Yeah, no. When I go traffic passes, so when I get closer to the airport, right? Then, uh, you know, they'll give me clearance to land. Okay, so, uh, why not I just show you one landing, lah? The landing one is, I think, right? Okay. <laughs> You see, you shake, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you crash, I wouldn't be here already, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's all, ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so, uh, after landing, uh, what do I do? Uh? I need to push the plane back. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> the plane has no reverse thrust. So, if, so if I, for example, like, the parking lot is here, right? Then I plane comes here, right? I need to push it back this way. Actually, how heavy is it? Uh, yeah, there's a weight. It's about uh, one ton. Yeah. So this is a tow bar and then push back. So it's essentially a lighter car. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's still very difficult to push back. <laughs> okay, so record the, uh, record the timer. <laughs> Then after that, I need to do all this, you know, the car, you don't care, right? This one, I need to put this thing, put the, the net, then the chain, and then the wheel chalk. Some people do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, I've run out of time already. So yeah, that's all. Any more questions, ask me after this. Okay. Now, okay. Now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay.